this is an Intertech Superbrain QD, uh, originally sold in the States early 80s. Uh, my first ex exposure to them was as a civil servant before I started with Turnkey, which is almost 30 years ago. This particular model must be easily 28 years old and has been sitting in our museum for certainly a few years since the last time it's been turned on. So, um, so tell me about some of the innovations that were in this machine at the time. I consider them to be state of the art at the time, but probably not for very long. Uh, it had two processors in it, two Zilog Z80 processors in it, a whopping 64K of RAM, uh, and this particular model, the QD, which was a slightly later model, had two five and a quarter inch floppy disks. Uh, laterally, you could get them with a 10 megabyte fixed disk that replaced one of the floppy disks, and there was also some external uh, larger hard drives of 20 megabytes and 144 megabytes. And, and what would a piece of kit like uh, would have? What would this have cost you all those years ago? In, in, in its day, uh, it was just short of three thousand pounds. Which now would be thirty thousand, probably. Silly money. Yeah. Right. And then, you know, if you were buying one of these, what, what were you doing with it? What were people doing? Uh, again, business software. There was word processing software. Uh, a, a product called uh, WordStar, which lasted for some considerable time. The operating system, uh, again, is an operating system called CPM, predates MS-DOS by uh, a considerable period of time. Uh, it wasn't really any true multi-user capabilities. You could link a whole bunch of them together to talk to a central fixed disk, but as far as file locking is concerned, it was very, very basic and wasn't, wasn't standard. It was add-ons to the software. But word processing, uh, we used a product called DBase2 at the time from a company called Ashton Tate uh, to write uh, business applica applications. Uh, and um, I mean, what in 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 your uh, level of confidence? How high is your level of confidence for it uh, turning on first time and working? Uh, without smoke. Uh, <laughs> hopefully, uh, whether we can actually persuade it to boot uh, and do something. Debatable. It's an old piece of kit. Uh, it would be nice to uh, to see it running again and capturing it on video as well. And then, when you say boot it, I mean, does it does it boot from a drive or does it boot from a disc? Uh, it boots from a five and a quarter inch floppy disk. Oh, I do remember those. And then um, you were showing me a sticker earlier. Oh, that was quite funny. That I, I had yes, to I, get. I, I found these and uh, and, and challenged uh, you to to what they were for. And in fact, if we look at this particular diskette here, uh, it's got a silver label on it, and this was to write protect the floppy disk. Yeah. And these were to allow you to do that. And what uh, what sort of size of memory was on these disks? These are three hundred and forty k from memory. <laughs> it's almost, huge. It's huge, isn't it? That's hilarious. Who was, who was, I mean, was it typically secretarial staff that were trained on these, accountants, was it just general office people? Typically, the, the, the user base that we've still got is very di diverse, and we had these machines in pharmacies and some hospitals with some very early colour printers for printing uh, labels for uh, bottles and prescriptions, etc. We had them in accountants, we had them uh, in builders, uh, doing payrolls when the payroll was still delivered in a little brown envelope to people once a week, mm -hmm. and and accountants and it's the where the incomplete records which grew into uh, into IPS started off. Yeah, yeah, IPS being your uh, the business's insolvency software, yeah. uh, putting the most successful product, I suppose. Okay, right, Bob. Okay. <laughs> we are ready to rock and roll, Chris. Yeah, switch on. Well, it's making whirring noises. So what happens in, do you have to push the disc in at a certain point? Well, we'll wait for the screen to heat up, which okay. it's really done, and it's telling us to insert the disc into drive A. Uh, these old floppy disks, you didn't dare power a machine up or turn the machine off with a floppy disk in it, because it could easily destroy what you had on the drive, okay. on the disc rather. So, pop the disc in, close it over. 
Cross our fingers. Cross our fingers. Well, at least it isn't smoking. Uh -huh. So, 64K of memory, super brain, quad density, DOS version 3.2 for CPM 2.2. Brilliant. DIR lists the contents of, of, of the drive. Directory of drive B. Okay, so we have a machine that's that's booted. Uh, this contents of this disk just looks like it's the operating system itself. Nothing exciting in the way of uh, applications on here. Stat lets me see what space we've got left on each of the drives. So I've got 164k left on the A drive and about 320k left on the B drive. Brilliant. See, that's a slightly more reassuring sign in computing terms. At least you know it's doing things. <laughs> uh, these machines didn't have real time clocks, so. Uh, you had to set the date, uh, the, the date and time. Every time? Yeah. Yes. Fantastic. So we've now loaded up basic. So we've now got a programming language that we could use to, to write programs. Brilliant. Um, so we can have a look to see what's on the, on the B drive. And we've got a program called invaders.com. Yeah. Hang on, I'm going to take a couple of pictures. Don't know what fires. Ah. I was never going to get the space in the house. Bringing back memories, Bob. Yeah, but not enough, though, is it? Really? <laughs> it's not skills that you're going to have to have uh, today, though, is it? <clears throat> when it came to being, um, you know, an IT support on a machine like this, I mean, what was typically what was the kind of stuff that you got? Kind of uh, uh, the main problems with the super brains, believe it or not, because it's got a, a CRT uh, display screen was we used to get dry joints and eventually the display would disappear. So you used to be a dab hand at whipping the cover off, uh, making sure there, there weren't lethal voltages floating about the cathode ray tube uh, and re-soldering some of the dry joints, uh, which would make it work. <laughs> uh, that and reseating chips, etc. So no tools entry in these. You also had to be really careful that you didn't scratch people's desks because they had exposed screws and various other fittings on the base. I think people probably needed a bit more desk space than they do now as well. <laughs> okay, so what, what have you uncovered then? So we've uncovered a shed load of chips, that's super so brain, motherboard, complete with the keyboard. Chips in this corner here, you'll see there's eight and four rows. So those are 16k RAM chips, four rows, which gives you your 64k of memory. Blame me. And if we can identify the two CPUs that this had various other peripheral chips. And that is going off. Yeah, okay, so this is two Z80 processors. So that's one of the Z80 processors, and that's the other one was dealing with IO for doing the 
rights to me rights to screen, etc., and rights to memory, and the other one for doing the actual processing, as I remember it. Can you okay. tell you what the screen resolution was? <laughs> Let's see what we've got around the back here then. Okay, so around the back we have uh, got a power supply and transformer here. I'm certain was uh, an aftermarket edition, aftermarket edition for uh, the UK market as these machines were shipped, to uh, shipped across from the States. Uh, we have uh, not a graphics card, the graphics was dealt with on the motherboard, but we've got a video card driving a traditional CRT monitor built into it. And it was this particular card here that you had to get out without electrocuting yourself uh, and sort the dry joints that caused video problems. This one's got a sticker on it suggesting that in May 1993 it was good. It's not been passed, pat tested since <laughs> 93 then. It's been pat tested. <laughs> I think that's just that it's a good video, a good video board. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic.